Introducing Tyco, a free and open source browser automation tool for driving your web browser programmatically. Hi, my name is Scott Davis. I'm currently a principal engineer with ThoughtWorks. Before that, I ran a software consultancy out of Denver, Colorado called ThirstyHead. I've been writing about web development for years. Articles for IBM, books for O'Reilly and the Pragmatic Bookshelf, and most recently videos for O'Reilly as well. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Tyco, a free and open source browser automation tool built by ThoughtWorks. So, what exactly is a browser automation tool? Browser automation tools are much like the driver automation tools you can find in modern automobiles today. Cruise control is a driver automation tool that keeps your car driving at a constant speed. On newer cars, cruise control can slow you down or even stop so you don't get in an accident. More advanced cars can parallel park on your behalf or even be summoned with a simple click of your key fob. They'll back out of a tight parking spot or back out of your garage and autonomously drive to where you are. This is what's so exciting about the idea of browser automation tools. WebDriver is a W3C standard that will soon be baked into every modern browser. WebDriver allows you to remotely control your browser from a script, visiting new web pages, filling in form fields, clicking on buttons, and so on. Automated testing is an obvious use for this. Testing the behavior of your web app in an actual browser couldn't be easier. But it's not limited to simple testing. You can grab screenshots at any step along the way, do sophisticated analytics like calculating download speeds and measuring time to interactive, and even verify how accessible your website is to folks with disabilities like low vision or lack of fine motor skills. And notice the lead editor on the spec, Simon Stewart. As it turns out, Simon is a former thought worker who has been working on this kind of browser automation for over a decade. As a matter of fact, ThoughtWorks has been actively working on browser automation tools for over 15 years at this point. You might be familiar with Selenium, a free and open source browser automation tool that we released way back in 2004. Simon Stewart released a free and open source tool called WebDriver back in 2007, and the two projects merged in 2009. So... Tyco is the latest in a long history of browser automation tools released by ThoughtWorks going back over 15 years. Where Tyco really shines is stability and ease of use. You're a quick NPM install away from getting a stable, reliable browser automation tool installed on your developer machine or added to your continuous delivery pipeline. What makes Tyco so stable is that it ships with a known good, compatible, working release of Chromium when you NPM install it. And what is Chromium? Well, outside of software, it's the element used to make the Chrome features on your car. In the web development world, it's the free and open source core that Google uses to make their Chrome browser. Clever, huh? But Chromium is also at the core of the Opera web browser. And in a recent unexpected move, Microsoft abandoned nearly 30 years of building their own web technologies to make Chromium the core of their Microsoft Edge browser. So, while there are still healthy competitors to Chromium in the open source ecosystem, Firefox uses a core called Gecko, and Apple Safari uses a core called WebKit, Chromium is a popular, well-supported foundation to many popular web browsers that you and your users are most likely already using. Since the new WebDriver W3C standard isn't fully implemented across all browsers today, Tyco uses the next best thing, the Chrome DevTools protocol. Now, as you might have guessed from the name, this is the same stable, low-level protocol that the Chrome developer tools use to interact with the browser, like the JavaScript console. If you've ever run a Lighthouse audit on your website, Lighthouse uses the Chrome DevTools protocol to pull performance metrics and accessibility results to build out its detailed analytics reports. Tyco has access to all of the same data and browser automation capabilities that these familiar development tools have. And now you do, too, in an easy, scriptable environment. So, let's get started. Here's a website for a fictional grocery store called Grocery Works. As you click around, you'll see that tapping the categories on the left show you different types of food items. Beans, nuts, pasta, produce, and so on. 
Clicking on a food item adds it to the cart on the right. Clicking on the food item again removes it from the cart. Clicking purchase allows you to place your order or cancel it. If you've already installed Tyco, you can simply type Tyco at the command prompt. This will launch you into the interactive REPL where you can explore the features of Tyco at your own pace. At this point, you're given two suggestions to type. One of these suggestions will make this a very short discussion. Instead, why don't you type in .api and see what other commands are available to you. Typing .api brings up a list of all of the Tyco commands. These should be fairly straightforward to understand. The open browser and closed browser commands do exactly what you'd expect them to do. Open tab, close tab, click, double click, right click, you get the idea. But if you want to learn more about any of these specific commands, simply type .api in the command name to pull up more information. For example, type .api open browser. Not surprisingly, this is how you open a new Chromium instance. But there are a number of flags that you can pass to control or customize your new Chromium instance. When you're in the Tyco REPL, typing open browser without any options will open a visible instance of Chromium so that you can see what you're doing. But if you're running Tyco as a part of your continuous delivery pipeline, you'll almost certainly want to run it in headless mode, which means nothing visible will be displayed. You can also control the size of the window, visible or not, to more closely emulate smartphone, tablet, or laptop users. All of these are standard, out-of-the-box Chromium flags. So, if you type Open Browser right now in your Tyco REPL, you should see a new instance of Chromium pop up with a blank tab, just waiting for you to do something interesting. For example, you could go to a website. If you type .api go to, you'll see that you can either type in a fully qualified domain name or any shortened version that you'd normally type into your web browser as an end user. So, if you type in go to https thirstyhead.com slash groceryworks, you'll visit the GroceryWorks website that we talked about just a moment ago. Of course, this works just as well visiting local host on your development machine or visiting the URL of your staging environment, your test server, or heck, even your production website. It's completely up to you. If you want to click on something on screen, not surprisingly, you'll use the click command. Type .api click to learn more about it. One of the most powerful features of Tyco is its selector logic. Whatever you or your end users can see on the screen, you can also use here in conjunction with the click command. So, if you want to see what kind of pasta you can add to your cart, simply type click pasta. You don't have to worry about what the underlying class selector is, or ID selector, or anything like that. Use the text on the screen, which is exactly what your end user would do. So, if you type click penne, click produce, click eggplant, click purchase, you in fact are clicking on radio buttons, checkboxes, and an HTML button using the same text that your user sees on screen. From here, you could type click purchase order or click cancel to proceed. Of course, if you need to be more specific, you can be. You can say click on the image or click on the link or click on the list item. You can click on the screen element to the left of or to the right of, above or below. You can even use the familiar dollar sign to use class selectors or ID selectors if that's the level of specificity you need. But believe it or not, the less specific you can make your Tyco scripts, the more resilient they'll be in the face of change. When you change that link to a button or that checkbox to a combo box or that class name yet again, you'll be happy that you used the on-screen text instead of the underlying implementation. While all this typing in the REPL has been fun, what if you want to run these commands as a part of your test suite or your continuous delivery pipeline? If you type .code, you'll see that the Tyco REPL has bundled everything that you've typed up to this point into modern JavaScript source code that's ready to be run from Node.js. Even better, if you type .code in a file name, the Tyco REPL will save that source code out to the file system in your current working directory. 
Once you've done that, you can type Tyco in the name of your script to see it run anywhere that you have Tyco installed. Your test servers, your continuous delivery servers, or even your local development machines. So, what have we learned? The types of automation features that we're beginning to see baked into modern cars, like adaptive cruise control and automatic parallel parking, are similar to the browser automation tools that we're beginning to see baked into modern web browsers. We're on the cusp of an exciting new era of web development, one where we have full programmatic remote control of our web browsers for testing purposes, for performance and accessibility analytics, for uses that we honestly haven't even thought of yet. This is why we're so excited about Tyco, a free and open source browser automation tool. You see, thought workers have been building tools like this for over 15 years now. We want to make sure that you have modern, stable, easy to use tools for your developers, for your test suites, and for your continuous delivery pipelines. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Tyco and how to drive your web browser programmatically. Thanks for your time.